So that's what the national numbers sort of got us into. Uh, whatever they propose. In our bylaws? I think it's in our bylaws. Is there a code? Oh. I think it's probably. I don't. I don't I'd like to call the June 27th planning and zoning meeting to order. Mr. Secretary, will you please call roll? Jay Alms? Here. Jim Hankins? Here. Shane Klinger? Scott Heideman, Dan Pfluger, here. Jody Stromberg, John Dan Danielovich, here. We have a quorum, so we'll continue. Um, communications. Hearing none, we'll move on. I need a motion to approve previous minutes. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we'll go right to item one, I guess. Uh, zoning map amendment from the two family residential R2 district to the multifamily residential R4 district for property known as 8782 Victory Lane. Carrie, can you bring us up to date? Yes, thank you. Uh, this is the former location of the Marina Terrace Clubhouse at the north end of Victory near North Pier. The commission may remember this property has been the subject of a few applications in the past few years since that clubhouse was demolished. In 2016, the board approved commercial zoning here for a proposed marina and convenience store. Then later in 2016, it was changed back to single family zoning. Somebody bought it and instead of building one home here, he petitioned for R2 zoning, which should allow just one duplex on the lot. However, the board approved R2 zoning with a planned unit development that included a variance to allow three duplex buildings, which is kind of a backwards way to go about it, in my opinion, but I didn't handle that application. And the board did end up approving a six unit townhouse development here in 2019 at the subject property. But that development was never actually built. This new owner of the property is now proposing four duplex townhouse buildings for a total of eight townhomes. And I wanna point out that if he wanted to do more than eight units, he would need to apply for a planned unit development, which would require a new application and the new public hearing, new notice to everybody. Um, the applicant has expressed to me that he's only interested in update units and he's not interested in applying for any variances from the village's multifamily design standards. This means that development will comply with requirements for parking, landscaping and open space buffers, covered entries, building articulation, window coverage on all sides of the buildings, things like that. If the applicant wanted to seek any variances from those regulations, that too would require a new application and a new public hearing. I wanna point out that the commission is only considering the zoning change tonight to allow up to eight residential dwelling units. They aren't considering the layout of the development, whether these would be rentals or not, whether there would be a dock or not. Nothing like that need, needs to be considered with the zoning change application. Um, that would only go back to the Planning Zoning Commission if the applicant sought any variances from our village regulations. Staff is recommending approval of this zoning change. We understand there'll be some impact to the surroundings in comparison to whether you know, the slot were to be kept vacant but allowing this type of moderate density housing as a transition between the denser multifamily to the south and the single family to the north is an ideal transition type of land use. And from a smart growth standpoint, infill development like this is preferred over urban sprawl. Um, eight dwelling units on this lot is actually less dense than what could potentially be allowed in single family residential zoning based on the minimum lot size for single family zoning. And this is why we recommend approval of the zoning change to take it back to R4 zoning as it was up until 2016, just six years ago. Thank you. Thank you. The applicant, Neil Kosicki. Yes. Could you come to the podium, please? Could I ask you to raise your right hand? I'm gonna swear you in. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. State your name and address for the record, please. Neil Kosicki, 
3587 Time Drive, Rockford, Illinois. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kosicki, could you add to Carrie's um, synopsis, I guess? <clears throat> I think she nailed it. <laughs> okay. uh, that was pretty much it. I mean, we want to put four duplexes up. Okay. Um, I understand they're townhouse style. Yes. Over and above. Okay. I, no, I guess it doesn't matter. We're just talking about zoning. So. Um, questions? Yes. Um, our materials say you want to build townhomes, um, and a duplex is not a townhome. What what exactly is your intent to build? I misspoke. Which, so, so townhome, yes. They are townhomes? Correct. Uh, I'm new to this type of thing, so. I think I there would be two attached townhomes. Correct. Four different buildings with two attached townhomes. Damn. So uh, just just um, their townhomes, garages on either side, two stories. To be determined. Most likely the garages are going to be underneath. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, the only big question I had was the egress um, flowing out into the street that yeah, comes from. That's a different meeting. At that's a different meeting the layout, right? right? Well, then we would do site plan review. Mm -hmm. It would only come back to the commission if you needed a variance from some of the standards that are already that we already look for when we do site plan review. Gotcha. Okay. And our village engineer will look at that and make sure everything is safe as far as getting in and out of there. Yeah. Okay. But right now it does have frontage on the little cul-de-sac there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. I have a question and it pertains to the findings of facts. Mm -hmm. So are, are these condo units, are these rentals, or what, what is this gonna be? Residential living units. Owned? I plan on personally living in one. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I do care on, and I consider them a higher end unit. Uh, they will be very nice, <clears throat> but we have not finished design or you know, have not determined all the details on it because until we go through this, it's hard to spend a lot of money for design. Sure. Okay. Anything further? Hey, uh, Carrie, the, the existing variants that allowed the three duplexes, has that been nulled once it was set? Yeah, uh, it's, sold? No. The, okay. it, it's ceased now. Okay. How long ago that was? Thank you. And actually, the applicant would have to go back through with platting and kind of start from square one since that approval was in 2019 and everything is expired. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we may call you back, but we're good for now. Thank you. David Narevich? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah. So we have a lot of people who want to speak, and anybody who wants to speak, of course, will be allowed to speak. We do have quite a few, though. So we would ask that you limit your comments. We have uh, rules and procedures that authorize us to try to limit your comments to about three minutes. If the person before you or someone before you more or less said what you want to say, you can kind of stand up and say, I agree with everything that's been said. We don't want to hear the same thing three or four or five times, if, if that's possible. Having said that, Anybody who wants to get up at the podium has the right to get up at the podium. So uh, we'd ask that you do that. And with that, I will, and everyone will be sworn in. So are we ready to go? Yes. Yes. All right. Raise your right hand. You saw me sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth stuff you got. Yep. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, David Nerovich, 335 Roberts Road, Inverness, Illinois. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just um, thought it was a good idea. I would, I'd like to live at one of these locations as well. So um, I've talked with Neil, you know, over the years. And so I thought, I think this is a good idea. 
Okay. Questions? Thank you, sir. Thanks. Jolyn Lanch. Raise your right hand. You saw me sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out. Yes, I do. Um, uh, name and address for the record. Please. Sure. Jolyn Lash, 950 Willow Street, Itasca, Illinois. Um, I'm in the process of moving, and this has been approached to me, and I thought it was another wonderful idea. I would love to live somewhere that has lake frontage. I'm a single mom who can't take care of the outdoors. Um, I'm actually, pardon me, a widow. So having a facility like this at the townhouse helps me in the sense that I don't have to worry about upkeep outside. So I find many advantages to it as well as maybe some nice neighbors by it being townhouses, you know, getting to know people next to me and a gorgeous view the river. That's all I wanted to let you know. Question? Thank you. If I, if I could go back to, to David, we have your address, but what community do you live in? Is it Rockford? Do you live in Rockford? Inverness. Inverness. Okay. Just for the record. Is it Maggie Kasicki? I'm married to Neil. I agree with what he said. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Abigail Carrasco? Oh, she's not yet on one. Oh, she's on one. Yeah. She's a different applicant. Okay. Hey, uh, Tina Barrick. Tina Barrick? Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's my wife. If you want to come up, that's fine. Yeah. I'm right underneath your name. Okay. okay. Tina and Mark. Okay. Yeah. I'll be right next door to one. Um, Wait, whoa, whoa. whoa. You gotta raise your hand. Sorry. Raise your right hand. If you saw the story, tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so you got it. Yes. I now state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Mark Barrick. I live at 114 North Pier Road, and uh, we would be, our house is right next to that open lot right now. Um, I just, you know, I, I just saw that they're trying to make an amendment, and I'm not even really sure exactly, you know, what all is going to go in there. I've heard everything from three stories to townhouses to condos to apartments. I'd like to know more what's going on on there. Um, I have solar panels facing that way. So they do a three story building, you know, say goodbye to the solar panels and everything. And I just want to know what's all going on, I guess. As far as we understand, townhouses. So okay. two stories would be okay. normal. All right. but anyway. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I do. I do want to point out in R four zoning, it could be up to three stories potentially. I just wanted to point that out for everybody. Uh, does that do, does your wife want to get up and speak, or is you in agreement with Come on up. Tina? I agree. Okay, okay thank you. Steve Martinson. Steve, raise your right hand. You saw me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Name and address for the record. Uh, three nine, or Steve Martinson, 394 North Pier. Thank you. Um, I'm just not sure why it needs to go to the extra units. When I look at the size of the property there compared to the two lots next door that are single family, it just seems that, you know, obviously if you put the garage underneath, it's going to be three stories. Um, but it, it doesn't doesn't seem big enough to be able to have that many people living there. That's my biggest thing. I'm not, you know, the the apartments when I call that the, the people that, that live in the apartments because of the roads are so bad, except for North Pier, we get so many people speeding down our street. You know, it's a little bit of a concern getting more and more traffic because up above them, which has the, you know, on, on the mall, the, the road's terrible. So everybody comes down our street and there's young kids on it and 60, 70 miles an hour sometimes. So I just don't think it's big enough to support that many units. Thank you. Okay, yeah, you're the chairman. 
Okay, just to add a little bit to that. Um, the multifamily immediately south, uh, between four and 14 units, has a density of one unit for every 1,800 square feet of land. This proposal is one unit for every 9,378 square feet of land. So it, it's, it's not as dense as you might think, but it, just to give you some numbers. So um, we're just trying to educate everybody on this. Thank you. Uh, Tina Rogers. I, I signed the wrong one. <laughs> okay, no okay. problem. No okay. problem. Which one did you mean to sign? <laughs> well, we want to make sure we call you ahead for the one proper one. one. She signed the right one. She just doesn't want to talk. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, all right. Dave Rogers. I'm not looking to talk either. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Matt Anderson. Uh, can you raise your hand? You saw him sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out. Yes. State your name and address for the record. Please. Matt Anderson, 364 North Pier Drive. Thank you. Um, the thought of multiple families, especially, it doesn't know if it's going to be condo, apartments. You get rentals, you don't know who could come in. And right now, it's all like our own little slice of paradise back there. And, um, our kids run around on the island back there through the neighborhood, and we can see them back there. You get, you know, up to eight families of you don't know where they're coming from, and all it takes is one bad apple to spoil the bunch and to say whether they get access to that or not. So someone's always going to look and say, hey, I want to go out there, and then the wrong person comes wandering around, and my daughter's playing in the yard, and there's only one access point. So that's a big concern of mine. And then, um, like, uh, muddy in the water. I know they're trying to put in as many docks as I hear. It's going to be a lot and can negatively affect the canal, which is how we get in and out of the river. And I do all my fishing on. And it's my little, our little piece of heaven that we all take great care of together. And um, just when you get that many people, whether it's condos, what I, like, you, it just takes one, and whether it's zoned now for this, who knows, in a year, then now it's no longer a condo or something to own. It could be a rental, so that's my concern. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Tricia Brandeik. 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 I don't wish to speak. I agree with everything. I'm just not in favor of the bill. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Don, help me with the last name. Two thirty six Northway Park. Dirt. Yep. I didn't come to speak. I just want to listen. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I got an M. Yeah. Did you want to speak? Yes. Okay. Come on. You can raise your right hand. It's almost where to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, you got it. Yes, I do. State your name and address for the record. Please. Michael Rapaki, 236 Northway Park Road. Thank you. I live in the Bayview apartment complex, and uh, this guy's high pricing the rent on those units at the end for the river view. So, what's this guy going to think they build there? Then they're going to say, well, we don't have no river view no more. So, it's going to lower our rent, or what's he going to do? So this owner guy isn't going to be too happy with having that built and having to maybe take the rent down from the value of it now. Uh, there's a lot of nuts in that neighborhood. You want to live there? I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know them all. <laughs> but anyways, the main thing is the view. And the two lower apartments don't even get a view because the damn weeds are so high. He just did cut it down a few weeks ago. But all that embankment is just tall weed trees and brush. And, and it's, it's not that nice there right now. You know, It's a dog park. You don't want to walk through there barefoot. <laughs> That's all we got to say. Thank you. Thank you. 
John Cabello. Hello, John. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Self, you got. I do. Name and address for the record, please. John Cabello, three twenty-four North Pier Drive. Thank you. Right down the street, and I spent a lot of money on the house that I bought, and we as neighbors do what we can to keep everything around us nice. Adding anything to that will detract and will bring down our property values. There's no doubt about it. There is no dispute about that. These are things that we need to look at, I would hope, when you make your decision. I've been on the same board before, and you can agree with all of the findings of fact and still vote no. Because we have many people here that you're going to see move, including myself. If you want a new place to live, I'll be more than welcome to sell you my house. Once this is, it, it won't be after you build. Can you please it, address the- It won't be after the build. My house value will go down immensely. So will many of these neighbors here. We're not very happy with it. This is the third time now that we've had to try to do something to stop this. If we would have known the property was for sale, I'm sure we would have gotten together and tried to buy it ourselves. We did not know that property was for sale. It could turn into it. No matter what is approved, it can change later. It will change later. You know, there's been murders right down the street in the apartments. There's been murders on Men's Drive. We don't want this. We don't want to see that. We don't want our kids to know about that or see that. When we moved here, we were always told that there was an issue with the ground, that the soil had been uh, um, contaminated by the, the uh, swimming pool that was there before. We have been told that the, one of the other uh, gentlemen, uh, Tim Savage, the old uh, uh, village administrator, uh, did things horribly wrong and inappropriate the last time he tried to do something. We don't believe that's going on here but we're tired of coming and saying, no, please, no, 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 no. I don't think anybody's gonna have an issue if it's a one home. Hell, I don't know if we'd even have an issue if it was two, two residential. But when you start adding these, it can turn into a situation that is just not good for the men and women that spent their hard-earned dollars to build a home on a place like this. Again, I'm more than willing to put my house up for sale, turning my back on McChesney Park and saying goodbye if this goes through. Uh, Lynn Krasinski? Did I say that right? Oh, sorry, I don't want to speak. Okay. Adam Hines. Please raise your right hand. You saw this word to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope you got. Yes, I do. Get your name and address for the record, please. My name is Autumn Hines. I live at 174 North Pier Drive. Thank you. So my house is the third one to the right, just right of the cul-de-sac. My husband and I just moved in with my son. We bought the house, our first house. We did that last October. And a huge appeal for us when we were purchasing was the quiet street. 
and the friendly neighbors. Um, I agree with a lot that's been said, but I just want to emphasize I'm a little bit, I am concerned about the traffic potentially that would be streaming through right in front of our house. Um, right now, there, there shouldn't really be too many cars that go there because it's just our house and the two others on that strip. But we do get a lot of people going through there and going into the apartments that are there. And um, I definitely want to keep the area slow and safe for kids to be playing outside. Um, my son's four and a half, and he's already met some friends down the street on Victory Lane, that L light that goes south down there. So I, I know that he'll be walking over there, and there's always kids playing outside on that strip too. So I just want to um, protect the safety of the kids. So I would be against this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Carol Trela? I want to say the same thing about my life. Oh, thank you. Dale? Orford? Sure. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> 414 North Dale, yeah. you raise your right hand. You tell the story. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Self, you got. I do. State your name and address for the record, please. Dale Harper, 414 North Pier Drive. Thank you. And I'm against it. Um, I do have one question, though. The lockets we are discussing would be this lot, correct, right here? It's, yeah. actually, it's actually three lots. There's the one that goes into the, the water. That rectangular one. You talking about these? Yes. No, not those, but this one here. Okay. No, he's gonna show you. It is what, you, it is what you described, it's just it's three lines. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't see any lines on it. Because this isn't this isn't a lot, right? That 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 is a lot. It's part of it, although it is mostly in the water, but it's back towards the yeah. You can't own the waterway. <laughs> isn't that correct? James, I don't think he saw what you outlined. So when you talk about yeah. the numbers of 9,000 square feet for one resident, I don't know about that. So the three parcels, I'll, I'll highlight them here for you. Okay, thank you. This is one parcel, this is the second, and this is the third. Historically, there are lots of examples of folks owning portions of waterways. They can't own the whole waterway, they can't own a whole lake unless it's a private lake but this is not uncommon um, throughout the state of Illinois or the state of Wisconsin. Yeah, somebody, somebody owns the entire island just outside of there. Yeah, somebody owns that. Okay, anyway, you can keep going. Okay, um, yeah, so, okay, so I, I just, my biggest question was, I don't see where you get nine, th I guess with the parking lot maybe, but, uh, well, basically I'm just against it, so. Can I just say just you. my question that I've had on the deals? You're gonna to have to get up and identify yourself because when they listen to the tape and have to transcribe it, I'm gonna to have to know who's speaking. Yeah. Are they counting the Yeah, they're counting the waterway as part of the it is part of it is part of the property. One of the three lots. Mm -hmm. When I bought there and I built my house myself 20 years ago, the lot lines went out into the channel also. They had to be reconstructed because they said they could not do that. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak that didn't sign up? I'd like to add something about uh, it. You, you got to come up here. Well, well, we also have somebody who hasn't spoken yet who wants to speak. Oh, but you go ahead. Go ahead. You're still on your own. Okay. Matt Anderson, 364 North Pier Drive. Like when I was talking about the island, like we all share that now, but there's only one access point and there's an easement that goes through the back of our yards to get there. So we all share that and take care of it. And we know everyone. So the traffic going through our yards to the one access point, which is all the way, yeah, you'll see, it's all the way actually goes through Mr. Meyer's yard. Right there. All right. Yep, right here. And so there's an easement, which we share to get there. And who knows, if you get that many people, like I said before, one bad apple, the one wrong person wandering through my backyard, my daughter's playing in the, what I, you know, that's, that was one of the big reasons why I mentioned that aside from it being, you know, this is our dream home. Like I, I never ever thought in a million years I'd 
live in a place like this, but I was able to use my VA loan to get it. And I don't want to lose that. Like it's our, like I said, our slice of heaven, heaven. We uh, just look out there watching the eagles and the creatures, but we take care of that and we take pride in it. And that many homes, again, one wandering through our yard, <coughs> just the one wrong person. That's all. Thank you. You're not on the list. Is that right? I'm not on the list. Okay. No. Raise your right hand. You sell me sure to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope you got it. I do. And uh, give your name and address slowly so they can get My name is Jerry Gibson, and I live at 5376 Sunbird Drive in Loves Park. Um, I do own the property at 8634 Victory Lane, and I'm the president of the Victory Landing Condominium Association. Um, one of the reasons why we are opposed is that <clears throat> we own that portion of Victory Lane. That's a private road. And this is going to substantially increase the amount of traffic, which we're going to be unable to control. And if nothing else, we would petition the village to take ownership of that piece of, uh, of Victory Lane and to maintain it because as I say, it's gonna substantially increase the amount of traffic on that private road. And there's no way we can police that. So um, we, would, we would petition the village to take ownership and maintenance responsibilities for that private road, currently private road. And it's also hard to be in favor of something that we have seen absolutely no drawings on. Um, and so um, at this point, I didn't sign whether I was for it or against it because I didn't have enough information. But at this point, I would say I'm against it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Raise your right hand. You saw this word, tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth to help you guys. Of course, yes. State your name and address for the record, please. Margaret Kosicki, 3587 Time Drive, Rockford. Oh, okay. Thank you. So first, um, we are really excited to build these luxury townhomes. This is my dream. I teach at Rockford University. Um, I'm a little offended today by the those people <laughs> comments that are being made and kind of it hurts my heart that people would be scared of us or um, people that they don't even know are making some sort of judgments of us. Um, my husband works for um, ComEd and has a fantastic job. Um, Dave <laughs> um, is re retired at a young age um, as a um, CIT of a big firm. Um, so we are, you know, upper middle class, you know, um, with six figure salaries looking to build luxury townhomes. This is my retirement home. I'm going to live in a luxury townhome. I'm not making a little rental unit. We're not making little rental units um, for us to be some sort of landlord. This is where we want to live and we want to, um, our kids are grown now. So I just don't want to take care of, we have a big house. I don't want to take care of the big house. I don't want to take care of the big yard. Um, we already have a boat. Um, so we fully plan on being living there and being a part of the community and being a part of McChesney Park. And um, I just wanted to, I, I just felt like my character was in question. And I felt like that needed to be put aside that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a professor. So that's the kind of people that are gonna be moving in. I don't think we're very scared of professors. <laughs> Great, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, just one more. Oh, oh. you gotta do it from the podium. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, just I, identify yourself one Steve, more time because- Steve Martinson, be 394 North Shore Drive. Uh, two things, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything personal if it was just those two people moving in, doing houses, nobody would be questioning anything. That's just whether other people live there or what they do with rentals. But 
when you're talking about the square footage being more than there's other lots, you're now what I learned is you're talking about all this area here is counted into the square footage. This this here, when you say that that's the square right. footage is going to be bigger than that because this is a really steep bank and nobody's mm -hmm. living on the river. So obviously, yeah. it's obviously mm -hmm. it's misleading when you say that's more square footage than this when it's actually. Oh, but what I've been saying is compared to. The density that we allow in single-family residential zoning. But you're, you're counting could, this as part of the density. Well, and we would we would do that with a even if well, it was you, a single-family home that it took in part I of the river. I guess that's misrepresenting because I was comparing it. I thought you said that this was actually more square footage than this, but when you look at it, it's clearly not, unless you're counting living on the river which is not possible yeah it would it, even if we didn't count the part that was in the water it would still be less dense than a single family residential could potentially allow if that was zoned single family yeah, that, that, and subdivided the there could be that. more there could be more than eight units there potentially with single family zoning that that was the only part that i was pointing out Again, state your name. You're still under oath. State your name and address. Hi, Jolyn Lash, 950 Willow Street, Itasca. As I said before, I'm looking to move here. I'm an outstanding citizen as well. I was a teacher's assistant for a school district for many years. I love children. I have safety of children in mind. I don't think eight townhouses is that big of a project where a condo or apartment complex is in consideration. That's already there. I don't think the traffic is going to be that much bigger. I think people realize that it's a residential area and are going to proceed slowly through there. And they tell me it's a great neighborhood, yet I hear that there's murders there. So which is it? That's very confusing to me. And you say it's a beautiful place. Well, why can't I join your beautiful place? Why are you excluding me? And I am offended by some of the things that were said. I'm a single mom trying to make my life a better place. My parents brought me up on a cottage in Wisconsin on a lake. My dad passed away. I sold it. I'm trying to grasp that dream again of living on a lake or a river, whatever you want to call it. So why are you taking that away from other people's dreams away as well? So I just wanted to add that. Okay. We're going to close the uh, public input now. Yeah. Well, something said about their phone. Oh, John wants to. Mr. Camilla. John, you're still under oath. John Cabello, 324 North Pier. Um, there is no site plan. None whatsoever. We're not at that stage. Yeah. Understood. We're not but there yet. if there is no site plan, I would think that it, it goes against what we're trying to prove here. I mean, we want to make sure, it, again, we would, we would have bought the land. We would have done everything we needed to do to buy the land to make sure nothing was built. So um, I'd be more than willing to entertain, you know, if anybody wants to put in writing uh, that they are going to live there and that they're going to live there for the rest of their lives. Um, otherwise, it's just talk. Okay. The public input is closed for now. Um, I need a motion to, uh, oh, no, has everyone? No. Yeah. I need a motion. motion. Motion to approve. Motion. Second. You got that? Is there a second? I need a second. A second. We have a motion and a second. Has everyone read and agree with the findings of fact? Yes. Okay. Yes. You? No. Um, I just thought. Oh, that's fine. Has everybody read and uh, approved the findings of fact? Yes. 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 All right, any other discussion? Discussion? It seems like we're, we're just talking about putting it back to R4. We're not talking about what's being put there yet. That's all got to come back to us. We, we don't know yet, if, even if the, the density will be approved. So. Yeah. Well, like I said, it'll only come back to you guys if he's seeking a variance from any of our regulations. And we do have pretty... Right. Pretty stringent, you know, yeah. stringent yeah. design standards for our four, and and yeah. there can be no more than eight units here without coming back to the commission. Jim, uh, 
Mr. Cabello pointed out that uh, the, the residents would be happy to buy that property to preserve the status quo. And, and I'm a little bit unconvinced because he also pointed out that this is the third time that they've been back here to oppose development on that piece of property. So they've had three opportunities to buy that property by his admission. Uh, the one thing that concerns me is uh, the gentleman that, uh, spoke about the private road. Does this property have public access without using someone else's private road? It does have frontage on the on the end of the cul-de-sac there. Okay. The south side of the cul-de-sac. Okay. Yes. And in, in R4 zoning, there is no frontage length requirement. So, so what's there is, is sufficient. So just to be clear, so it, right now it's two family residential. That's right. So the only thing that could go in that each one of the three plots would be a two family residence. Well, they, they, first they would need to be combined with a subdivision replat so that, because because only the one piece actually has road frontage. We couldn't allow it to be subdivided with lots that are created without any road frontage. So all three lots need to be combined. And with R2 zoning, only one duplex could be built now after those lots are combined. Mm -hmm. Which leaves. One of the neighbors actually bought that property. Okay, you're out of order. We, we you're out of order, John. John, you know you're out of order. Please sit down. We would have bought that. John. So to be clear, so there, there's three plots. If it would stay the way it is, there could only be one. So the purpose to change it to four is to open it up for access to be able to no, get to, to your to the, they, they would potential still be, properties. The, the, the R4 zoning is sought to allow a total of eight dwellings there. Eight living units. Eight yeah. living units, yes. Yeah. Four buildings in this gentleman's yeah. um, plan. plan. Mm -hmm. But we right. haven't seen it yet. That's yeah. what we've been told. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, R4 is for six <clears throat> units or more on one lot. Like I said, the lots do still need to be combined. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All right. Call the roll. Call the roll. Uh, Scott Heideman, Jay Alms. Aye. I'm sorry, Jay. Yes. Dan Pfluger? Yes. Jim Hankins is yes. Shane Klinger, Jody Stromberg, John Danielevich? Yes. Four yes, two yes. Three yes. Okay. Three yes. So this will go forward as a positive recommendation to. It'll be Tuesday, July 5th, when it goes to the Planning and Economic Development Committee. That meeting is here at 5.30, Tuesday, July 5th. Carrie, could you summarize the process after that, too, for the residents as well? Yeah, they, the, they would like the to Planning and Economic Development Committee on the 5th, they will also vote on a recommendation. Then it goes to the board. And you can appear and give mm -hmm. comments at that meeting. Yeah. And then it goes to the board on July 18th for four, first reading. If it were to fail at that meeting, then it's dead. But if it gets voted for approval on that July 18th board meeting, then it goes August 1st for a final board vote. If anybody wanted to speak at any of the board meetings, you do need to sign up to do that ahead of time. You would contact our, our village clerk to do that ahead of time. We have other agenda items. You, you don't need to stick around if you don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Item six, zoning map amendment from the mobile home district to the light industrial district for property known as 11499 Summerwood Drive. 
If I could interject, I'm terribly sorry. Mm -hmm. A gentleman um, came late to the meeting. I think uh, he came for a different item. And okay. I think the sheets were gone and he couldn't sign in if, oh. unless I'm unless he was seeing it incorrectly. Okay. We always ask if there's more people who want to speak. So. Sir, just chance. just take just listen if, if if you will be given an opportunity to speak on whatever item you're here for. Uh, Heather Heidenreich. <coughs> So we, need, we need staff okay. report. We need oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Give us one second. <laughs> sorry. I apologize. It's been a long meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to report on items seven or six, seven, and eight together because they do go together. These next three items are all regarding a proposed self storage facility at the southeast corner of Summerwood and Irving Boulevard. This is a vacant lot now just north of HMH Concrete. The lot is owned by HMH Concrete. This request requires a zoning map amendment, a special use permit, and because they propose to use corrugated steel for the exterior to match the HMH concrete building, the applicant is also seeking a variance from our industrial design standards, which prohibits corrugated steel as a primary building material. Currently, this property is zoned in the mobile home district, but there are no provisions to allow self-storage in that district, so the applicant is seeking to change it to the light industrial district, which is consistent with the surrounding zoning to the south and to the west. And staff does recommend approval of that zoning map amendment. On to the special use permit for self-storage facility. Um, only three buildings are proposed. The site plan provided does not give a whole lot of detail, but access to the facility would need to come off of Summerwood because that portion of Irving that runs next to there is not a public roadway. And prior code requirements for all self-storage that we have in our code, the facility shall be entirely fenced in. There shall be security lighting, but it cannot be projected towards residences. Nothing hazardous can be stored there. Uh, staff is recommending approval with seven total conditions of approval that reiterate requirements that are in our code. And as I mentioned, agenda item eight is seeking a variance to allow corrugated steel to be used as the exterior building material for these self-storage buildings. This is not an unusual request when it comes to self-storage and the use of steel on these buildings is absolutely not out of character for the surroundings. It would actually offer an improved look compared to the industrial buildings that are across the street to the west. Staff recommends approval of this variance with the condition that the buildings match the HMH concrete building directly south of the subject property, which the applicant is, has suggested and would like to do. Thank you. Heather? Sorry. Now it's your turn. Raise your right <laughs> hand. You tell me sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out. I do. State your name and address for the record. Heather Heidenreich. I live at 1222 Sand Pebble Drive in Rockton. Uh, do you want her to talk about the whole package, right? Yeah, all, all three requests. Yeah. Okay. Talk about the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Well, so like she stated, we own the the uh, building that is existing at one one four one one Summerwood Drive. Um, it is a. I did submit pictures of that. Yeah, they got that. In okay. Um, and it's a tan building with maroon trim, and that is the uh, idea of what we're planning to do with the storage units if we put the, those buildings up if we're allowed to do so. We reached out to Morton Buildings, who is the uh, company that erected the existing structure on our company lot. So we want them to match. And so they, they did, um, they wrote, they made some CAD drawings. So they are very minimal information at this point, but they were. 142 by 141. 42 wide by 142 deep. So he went off of all of the information that we got from uh, the website in regards to setbacks and what would fit and what would be appropriate for the property. Um, and like I said, being that it is a storage units that would be going there, we wanted it to just match the building and not spend the extra money to um, vary from the code. We thought that the corrugated steel would be appropriate as long as it matched. Um, we are aware that there is a waiting list on the um, storage units in the area. So we feel as though there's a need for it. 
um, and we have the building neighboring, so we will keep an eye on what the heck's going on in the area. So I, I am hoping that if we are willing to go ahead and abide by all of the conditions that we'll be allowed to do so. Questions? Dan? So I went by there and um, so immediately across the street are homes. Um, so I'm a little concerned about the lighting. Um, so in one of your findings of fact, so I'm not too sure a lot of storage units are pretty brightly lit. So I'm I got a little concerned about that. And then, uh, the, your building looks nice. Um, but I'm a little, where, where are these, there's two different types of fences, which way is you on your, your North, South and Eastern perimeters. Should be screened with a tall solid fence. Western be screened by a wrought iron. Which one's the yeah, western? Western would be facing summer wood. And that's a requirement in our code that mm -hmm. where it faces the, the roadway, it shouldn't be solid because we want people to be able to keep an eye in there, you know, nobody be able to sneak in there and right. You want to be able to see what's yeah. going on. And, there. And yeah. And the entrance would be off of summer wood as well, rather than on the residential side. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it would be on Summerwood as opposed to Irving, and that was what was required as well. Yeah. Um, you say that there's a there's a shortage of storage facilities? God, they're up. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I think there's a waiting list. I know there's a lot of them, but we have been informed that there there's yeah. still a, a need for them. So uh, that's okay. why we thought that maybe we would try to do that with our vacant lot. And then... Um, the property that you own just ends at, at that is uh, you own the rest of that that gravel pit or whatever also so to the right to the right there is that this this is the lot we are proposing to build on yeah. this is our current property and to the right of that Where that's nothing to do with you this is not us no that's not you so i have a question for you so kitty corner is is that our residential zoning kitty corner the empty lot is that, is that residential R one? I think it's in your staff department. Like, what is it? Did I, I don't include the diagonal. I'm. I think that's actually either commercial industrial sitting <coughs> over there. That actually had the sign for the for the mobile home park on the on that corner on there. That. So I'm wondering if that's also that may also be. Mm -hmm. I think mean, James is going to turn on the zoning and mm -hmm. see what it is over there. So, uh, yeah, because that was my uh, one concern because we had the, the church move in down down the street. Mm -hmm. um, and if all that's going to be residential um, in those empty lots, I just okay. want to make sure I know what that, the, that the brown, area is. The brown is currently zoned for mobile homes. Okay. So that's what you're talking about? Okay. No, I'm talking about the purple. Oh, Kitty Corner, I thought yeah, you were talking Kitty about Corner. up there. You're talking about across the street. That yeah. is that is zoned industrial. Industrial. That's all industrial. That's light industrial. Yeah. The light industrial is the light purple, and general industrial is the darker purple. Hmm. And to the north is mobile home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rock it directly north, mobile. It's all mobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or modular. Modular. Home. Modular home. Yeah. Modular home. Quite nice looking, actually. Um, okay. So that whole street, really, that we're on on Summerwood from <clears throat> Irving South is all light industrial, commercial. So we were hoping that it wouldn't draw away being that it's just to the north of our shop. Gotcha. Okay. Just seeing how it fits into the area. Mm -hmm. Any outside storage? Pardon me? Any outside storage within the fence or is it all enclosed? It, all it would all be like within the, all in the building. Yeah, all within okay. the three yeah. units. Okay. Uh I have a question. As far as it's hard to tell where the fence would be, like for setback and everything else, because on that that private drive that is the mobile home park, where would the where would that fence reside? Is it like all the way at the edge of the property, or is that do we hit and know how far it's, off of the roadway that would be? Yeah, I mean it could go up to the edge of the property as long as it surrounds the the buildings. That's what we'll look for. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mike Fasula. Um, 
I, I'm going to need you to raise your right hand. You solemnly sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you. I will. State your name and address for the record, please. Mike Pasula, uh, 3196 Alice Drive, Rockton, Illinois. Thank you. And HMH is owned by Heather. I'm her dad and a principal in the company. Uh, I'm assuming the 31, the way Dwight Bond drew up the proposal, uh, the buildings are 31 feet set back from all areas. So what we do is where he showed the gravel, you know, parking, that would be the roadway, we'd have fencing at the, adjacent to that. And it's you propose six to eight foot uh, solid fencing and then the wrought iron in the front. That's right. And I feel the lighting would be no different than what's on our existing building. They're box lights. They go on when uh, dusk and dawn, you know, Go off at dawn, on at dusk. So as far as uh, brightness, uh, I don't think it'd be effective, affect anybody. And then, because I wouldn't have any uh, poles to light up anything high. They would just be box lights on the units, enough to make it safe. Are you guys planning on having units on both sides of the building with garage doors on either side, or is it just going to be units, one entry in? The units would go from our existing building. Three units would just go north within the perimeter of the red. So the doors would be, uh, the buildings are 141 by 42. The lot is uh, 200 by 270. I think what he's asking, are, are there going to be doors on both sides of the building? Yes, there are going to be. Okay. So we have to have roads to get in around it, and then they'd all be paved. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to speak on this one? Jerry Gibson. He's, he was from the other one, I think. He just wrote from one. Um, Mary Beth Banks, I have. All right. Raise your hand. You saw this word, tell the truth, the whole truth, so nothing but the truth, so be it. I do. State your name and address for the record, please. Mary Beth Banks, 5695 Irving, Buttercup, whichever. I'm actually on Irving. Thank you. I'm totally against it. <clears throat> our, our housing... We lose the, the property value down the tubes. That'll hurt even more. And especially, I, I'm trying to, there's only a few houses that that's going to be looking at. Mm -hmm. oh, but yeah. that's all you, you don't own any further than that. How come that's all done? Well, ma'am, 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 address your comments to the commissioner, not to the, not How to the come? Ground. All that is dug out. All that. Ma'am, ma'am, ma address the commission. I'm sorry. There's a whole big area that well, there used to be two big empty trailer things, box, truck trailers. They're gone, and now it's all dug out, the dirt. I'm just curious. It's. I think it goes further than those that red box there well the, those are the prop that That's is the property boundary there is a different owner there's a different owner that owns what you're talking i don't about. know if i don't know if the concrete company leases space there or uses that space at all okay no so, so but that, that property that would not have a storage garage okay so that would be the extent of the storage That's how right. many units are you talking Three, 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 three different three. buildings. No, but I mean, how many actual storage units? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. And they can go in on either. There's going to be a door here and a door there. They can go in either way. So now we're going to have more traffic on Irving coming in to get on the 
South End. Yeah. I do want to point right? out that there won't be any, the traffic, if traffic ends up going down Irving to get to this, then they've missed their turn. They, they need so to So they turn. can't get in. There will not be access on Irving because that's not a public road there. So anyways, they'll come in off of Summerwood and go in. And if their door is on the back end, they just drive around back there. I don't know. I, I'm just, I, I say no. Uh, our property values are going down. People don't even want to live over there anymore. So, If I can just add something. I rent a unit not there. And there's a lot more than that. And there's nobody ever there. I mean, people go in and, you know, I mean, it's not like it's something, it's not a store. It's You put stuff in storage and you, you forget about it for three months. I mean, that's true. There's not. Yeah, you know, I... I mean, if now that I'm looking at you, nobody really knew where it was going to be. That, I and mean, it, if it's going to be and just it's be that fenced. little bit. Oh, yeah. Isn't there a, I thought there was a fire hydrant on the corner there. There's, there's, hopefully there's hydrants all over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there is. I think every 300 feet, there's there's a hydrant in there somewhere. Yeah. So the developer did that. Uh, okay. 400 feet, maybe. The fire hydrant will not be behind a fence. Right. If that they, can't block that. Fence. They, they cannot yeah, block. So, I, whatever. Go ahead, Phil. <laughs> <I don't laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Is there anybody yeah, else? Man, please. <laughs> please, sit, please sit down. Please, man, please sit down. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? <laughs> Sir? Could you raise your right hand? You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out. Yes, I swear to God. State your name and address for the record, please. Marvin Hacker at uh, 5358 Irving Boulevard. Thank you. My opposition is due to the, as the young lady ahead of me mentioned, the, it's going to impact the saleability and the, and the value of my uh, home which lines up with the uh, the east end is, is going right up through my driveway if it were extended. So I'm the third house from the corner on the north side of the road. And when we moved there, of course, we expected to have mobile home neighbors. That's about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay, at this time we'll close the public comment. I need a motion to approve, please. This is a motion to approve uh, the map amendment. Yeah, well, we'll do one, one at a time here. So map amendment from MH to IL. Motion. I'll second. Has everyone read and agree with the findings of facts? Yes. 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 Let's see. Hang on one second. We're talking about all three motions. Uh, just, just the one for now. Just, just, the just one. for this just the one. Just <laughs> just, gotcha. just one. Yes. Okay. Mr. Secretary. Okay. I heard yeses. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Usually, oh, yeah. for any other discussion. I'm sorry. Is there any other discussion? No. 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 Seems like a good fit to me. So. <laughs> and there is a need. So. You ready to call the roll? No. Yes. Scott Heideman? Jay Holmes? Yes. Dan Pfluger? Yes. Jim Hankins? Yes. Shane Klinger? Jody Stromberg? John Danielevich? Yes. Four yes, three absent. Four, 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 yeah. So positive recommendation, uh, Tuesday, July 5th. Um, you should be there. But well, we have to do the other two. We might as well just roll right in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So motion to approve. The motion to approve special use permit for self-storage in the light industrial district. Motion. Second. Second. 
Uh, is uh, is there any other discussion? Um, I'm just looking at one other thing about a recommendation. Carrie, give me your opinion on do we have any landscaping in front of it facing the mobile homes that are currently there in front along the front of your own there just depends. Yeah, we don't require any landscaping. We just require the, so I, I the don't see solid it in, I don't see it in our recommendations or no, comments. And, it, and it's not a it's not a condition for self storage in our code. Right. right. I just feel that since we're our light industrial, we're talking about brick buildings and brick facades and mm -hmm. stuff to make it look nicer. Mm -hmm. Usually landscaping is based on the number of parking stalls. And with self-storage, there isn't a minimum number of parking stalls yeah. because everybody just parks in front of their units when they're using them. Mm -hmm. I would I would like to add that some trees be planted facing the mobile home park area. Do you want to make a motion make to Make a motion add to include condition? that. Any discussion on that? Okay, we have a motion to amend the main motion. The main motion is to approve the special use as presented. You're making a motion, and I think you need to be a little more specific. You can't just say, I'm amending it to add some trees. Uh, right. It's difficult. Yeah. It might be I might suggest that you make a strong recommendation to Carrie to see if she can negotiate some, full, you know, some, I don't know, whatever, something. But it's pretty hard to identify exactly yeah. what that would be right, I don't in want your motion. Without a plan. Without a plan. Without a landscape plan. You know, right. Is that two trees? Is that two little right. two trees? Is, a, is that 10 trees? What is it? I yeah, I mean, if it's two, well, what is it, 200 foot? Um, <laughs> My point is, yeah. I don't recommend you try to define that now. No. And I think it's probably better if we just see if staff can work something out. Yeah. So, Carrie, I would recommend that you talk to them about some landscaping for that. I just that. don't see any better way to do it. James, you have Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the recommended spacing for, for street trees is 35 to 50 feet. If you want it to appear like they're parkway trees, then you could say, you know, install um, as many two and a half inch caliber. Uh, deciduous tree, uh, deciduous, yeah, deciduous yeah. trees um, every 35 feet along the Irving Park Boulevard perimeter. That would be a way that Carrie could measure out exactly how many she would know on the landscape plan which plant which trees to to look for, and then be able to incorporate it that way. Maybe Carrie just. Oh yeah, are you picturing canopy trees? That's you know skinny trunks, and then. Or are you picturing like evergreens? I'm picturing more evergreens, arborvitums, or whatever. Um, arborvitae, however you say it. Arborvitae. Um, arborvitae. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So it's, it's green all year long. It's your call. You can close public discussion, but it's your call. I'm done talking. <laughs> Mr. Fasula? In question on the trees, now that would be in the easement of the setback. That's where you're proposing to put them in? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and trees can go in the required setback area. They don't need to meet setback like a structure would. But how would that encroach on the fencing? They would be closer to the curb? I, th I think that's what he's suggesting, that they be outside of the fence. Correct. Yeah, right outside of the fence. All right. Between the fence and the street. Well, I think once we move along with this and I get a site plan from RK Johnson, we can, you know, propose a little bit more. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a good neighbor. Okay. Yeah. There we go. See what I'm saying? But first things first, and then I'll go to RK, get everything on paper because they're going to shift and go down the hill. Mm -hmm. So I need grades, you know. Yeah, I, and I do want to point out if it's not a condition, you know, when I'm actually looking at the plans after mm -hmm. this is all said and done, if it's if it's not a condition, then I can't require it. No, 
I'm just going to take a gentleman's gentleman's word. How's that sound? We'll see what uh, they propose. Okay. Okay. So you're withdrawing the motion. I'll withdraw my no, motion no for second, landscaping so. as a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. But like I said, once we proceed and I get a drawing from RK on the property to show you exactly how it's laid out, I think you'll be a little bit more comfortable. Make sense? You got it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And my only statement to that is we're black, we're, we're putting wrought iron so we can see in there. On the, That's on the west, on the west, on the west side. side. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like Just north side. Yeah. Yeah. North side. Okay. I, I think if I can <laughs> clarify, is Correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. I think Dan is saying that, you know, we've got 200 feet of solid board fence facing the mobile well, homes yeah. out there. Dress it up. And it, we put something in there to break it up. Yeah. Okay. Would seem appropriate. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. We can exactly. Take, okay. We can take the vote. Okay. On right. the voting. Okay. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Could we agree with the finding of facts? I'm not sure. Did that Everybody? Yes. 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 Mr. Secretary. Scott Heideman. Jay Holmes. Yes. Dan Pfluger. Yes. Jim Hankins is a yes. Shane Klinger, Jody Stromberg, John Danielevich. Yes. Four yes, three absent. Okay. So another positive recommendation. Item eight, variance from the building materials design standard in the light industrial district. So, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, discussion? I think we're we're talking about matching what they have there now, so it's only appropriate. <clears throat> okay. Everybody read and uh, agree with the findings of facts? Yes. 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 Mr. Secretary. Scott Heideman, Jay Alms. Yes. Dan Pfluger. Yes. Jim Hankins is a yes. Shane Klinger, Jody Stromberg, John Danielevich. Yes. Four yes, three absence. So, okay. This commission finds in favor. Um, you need to be at the July 5th meeting. 5 30. 5 30. Tuesday, July 5th. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks. Item nine <laughs> Zoning map amendment from the commercial neighborhood CN district to the single family residential R1 district for property known as 6819 North 2nd Street. It says Carrie. Yep, this is a single family residence, which was built in 1955 on North 2nd Street. Since then, commercial buildings have taken over this block, which is between Wood and Marie, across the street from Riverside Community Church. Um, I was not unable to track down when exactly this property was changed to commercial neighborhood zoning, but it is assessed as a residence and it has continually been used as a residence. Now that it is for sale, the sellers have applied for this zoning change strictly because it's hard for a buyer to secure financing for a non-conforming home because that home could not be rebuilt in that location if it were ever to be destroyed. Staff recommends approval of this zoning map amendment. Nothing is being changed. This would only make the existing home conforming to our current regulations. Thank you. Um, Denise or Matt? Denise. Come on up. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, if you got, I do. State your name and address for the record, please. Denise Van Fleet, three seven twenty two B Lane, Beloit, Wisconsin. Thank you. You're welcome. Is, is there anything you need to add to Carrie's report? No, it was an excellent summary of what we're hoping to do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sounds like a slam dunk. Here. Right. Uh, thanks. Uh, is there a motion? Motion. Second. I'll second. Discussion? I don't know what we'd argue. I mean, it <laughs> sounds like a 
It's a home. Linda. <laughs> yeah, I, I. Oh, you do have a story. Okay. This this one kind of bothers me because we keep flopping back and forth from commercial to residential zoning. It's as near as I can tell, that part of the village, there's a lot of buildings that are pre-existing, non-conforming uses that and, and it's a mixed it's a mixed use and it's mixed zoning. Um, and our our comprehensive plan calls for commercial zoning in there, which I think is appropriate. And and the only reason that I that I see in the packet for changing it is that it's currently a non-conforming residential. It has been for a long, long time. And has been yeah. for a long time. I believe it was zoned, I was trying to trace back. I think it was zoned commercial prior to the village even incorporating. And I don't know why or when it got changed to commercial, but it's remained a residence this entire time. It would be pretty penal to say no. <laughs> it really would. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If somebody wanted to, to do a business in there in the future and they wanted to change it to commercial zoning, come back here. They, yeah, it'd come back here and it'd be consistent with the comp plan and it would make sense. But right, nothing is being changed with this zoning change. Does, does that have the appearance like we can't make up our mind? I don't think so. No, it just depends what the what the owner plans on doing with it. You know, and right now they're on they're it's difficult to sell it as a residence. <coughs> Frankly, they're correcting it. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're turning it into a conforming use, which is what we would <coughs> like to see people do. I mean, it's a house that's not going to fall down. If, if I understand this correctly, though, it's it's a, a rental house. And I don't know if it's a rental or, or not. So I think it might says, be a rental now, but it, it, who knows who's going to buy it. We pull her back up and ask her. And if, and if someone wants to buy it and use it for commercial, then we change again. And then the, I, I've been again getting a number of calls from realtors asking if this is a conforming home. And I think everybody that's been interested in it wants to use it as a residence. And so that that all of that is all considered commercial all the way in that whole block because i thought yeah. when i drove by i thought the the second building up from ramona looked like that might have been a residence as well so that's why i, I was kind this of is between marie and wood or marie yeah so there might be a, non, a yeah. residence Probably yeah another non -conforming yeah so there. that i guess i'm just yeah i would like to move this along i understand i understand what where where jim is at but i, I think this kind of get, probably got switched improperly at some point yeah. because some or there may have been up, commercial plans at some point yeah. and but they never happened this yeah. this came this issue came before us before when somebody was just trying to refinance their home that they've lived in forever and they were That's unable cool. to do it yeah it's been a long time yeah hmm. okay that's all i gotta say Okay. Is there any way I can ask her if this is a rental or does she live in it? Or? Well, that she's trying to sell it. She's trying to sell it to a person who wants to live in it as a residential. Well, we don't know we that. Don't, we don't know that. Don't, it doesn't matter. Buy it. It's yeah. a, yeah. <laughs> a residential. Because nobody will buy it. it yeah. <laughs> Can't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Everybody, has everyone read the findings of facts? Yes. And agree? Yes. 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 Mr. Secretary. Scott Heidemann, Jay Alms? Yes. Dan Pfluger? Yeah. Jim Hankins with the reservations? Yes. Shane Klinger, Judy Stromberg, John Danielevich? Yes. Okay. Four yes, three absent. So this will go forward with a positive recommendation to the July 5th meeting, 5.30. That's a Tuesday, next Tuesday. Thank you. The long wait. <laughs> <laughs> but it was interesting. Okay, we're going to take a one hour break. <laughs> <laughs> like the Item 10. 6 committee. <laughs> <laughs>
special use permit for outdoor storage in the light industrial district for a property known as 1234 Shepherd Drive. Carrie. Yep, uh, there is a junk removal business called Jan's Disposal, which is planning to relocate from Loves Park to this subject property up on Shepherd. Because the business involves lots of trucks and containers, they're seeking the special use permit to allow that equipment to be stored outdoors at the business. Outdoor storage in this older industrial area would not negatively impact the surroundings. The board has previously approved a number of outdoor storage special use permits in this vicinity. And staff recommends approval of this outdoor storage with conditions that an occupancy permit must be applied for and required improvements must be completed before the business starts operating from the location. The outdoor storage must conform to the submitted site plan and a fence permit does need to be applied for and issued before the fence goes up. Um, the outdoor storage must all be within an eight, 12 foot tall site obscuring fence. All vehicles must be parked on an approved hard surface. And none of the items or debris collected during the junk removals can be stored in this outdoor storage area. Also, the special use would cease upon the applicant leaving the location. So if someone new were to move in there in the future, they would need to come back and seek their own special use permit if they also wanted to do outdoor storage. Thank you. Abigail. Carrasco. Raise your right hand. You saw this word, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, yeah. Yes. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Abigail Carrasco, 5614 North 2nd Street in Loves Park. Thank you. Can you add anything to Carrie's report? Um, we do junk removal. We also do container rentals, um, mostly container rentals, a few junk removal jobs. So, not so much coming back to our facility. No, well, nothing's coming back to our place. It's all emptied before we come back. Is that a vacant property now? Yes, it used to be, uh, I believe, just a warehouse for storage. Um, okay. And now it's been empty for, I believe, a few years. Okay. So it will definitely be an improvement to what's there. So, questions from the board? I do. For for the containers that you're going to have outside, are those just single st single height? You're not planning on stacking them like, oh, no. up or anything? No, um, we rent them out, um, so they're just... The single containers, our trucks come in, load them up, and they they go to a resident or a commercial property okay. for them to yeah. fill it. Okay. I did include the pictures that she provided yes. in your packets. Yep. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, they, that any containers, they wouldn't be multiple high or anything. No. I don't think we would allow that. So you're... Um, you're picking up stuff, junk, and then dumping it at the dump, or are you leaving any of the stuff there? No, so all of the items, they go to either the Winnebago landfill or the Rosco transportation. Okay. And the condition wouldn't allow it to be dumped. Right. No. Okay. Carry yeah. yeah. So it says 8 to 12 foot tall fence? Yes. Right? Okay. So as of right now, it does have a chain link fence. Uh, it's 8 feet tall. It goes around... Um, the front and then the two sides of the building. The back doesn't have anything right now. Um, we do plan on, for the time being, just putting up uh, like mesh okay. to make it Side privacy. Okay. Yeah, hopefully later down like the road the, once the business slats. Gets, yeah, yeah. Okay. Once business gets going, we'll plans are to change that out. Okay. I'm just going to clarify. You actually can't wrap it in mesh, just so you understand. Okay, so it would just be the ones that go inserted inside. You have to do the vinyl slats. Yes. Okay. Vinyl, I think they're vinyl or aluminum. Um, well, outside all outside storage. Oh, outside storage. Okay, okay. okay. That's, what, that's why, because it's yeah. commercial there. It's only outside storage. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that needs the SUV. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I also but. did have, um, for the number one, uh, the occupancy per permit. Hmm. Um, so as of right now, we don't need to be inside just yet. Um, we just need the outside storage for the containers and the trucks. Once winter rolls around, that's when we'll need to actually get in there to store our trucks in there. That way... They don't freeze, so we can actually get to work. Um, so I did want to see if that was something that we could potentially push back for the okay. occupancy permit until winter. Were you going to have an office there? Uh, we do plan on, yes, but still needs a little bit of work. We haven't fully, we, we're purchasing the property now. Um, we're currently waiting on closing, which is August 8th. Um, so once we get in there, we're able to 
Okay. Except I, I think it's still a good idea to get the occupancy inspected. Yeah. And the occupancy application is just gets uh, inspectors in there okay. to see what needs to be brought up to code. Okay. And from from a life safety standpoint. Okay. okay. So even if it's before you close on the property, it's a good idea to do that to okay. know what you need to fix. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Good. More questions? Thank you. Yeah, I guess I'm not, I, I'm just to clarify, so you're, you'd like the first condition to be removed though, because you still want to be able to park things there or operate the business from there before the occupancy is approved? Um, we would like to just be able to park there um, as soon as we close. Um, and then once we start going, we're able to, you know, fix up. I know for sure it needs, the water needs to be fixed. Um, so I know that's going to be a, a hefty cost. So if we could push that more towards like the winter. Okay. Um, I don't know how comfortable I, we are with I, that. I need to interject. What will end up happening is items will creep in the building. And yeah. what I've been told and from what I've seen about the building, there are significant co code issues in the building that need to be rectified before anything, before anybody can go into the building to occupy. Whether it's, whether it's just to store items there, mm -hmm. whether it's to store vehicles. I understand use there's the bathroom. some use the bathroom. I, those those items, I, I'm, I'm sorry, have to be taken care of as soon as possible as part of, we can't we can't allow you to push those off. Those are life safety issues that have to be addressed if you're going to use this property as a whole. Storing items out in the in the parking lot temporarily. Uh, again, it's what we've seen historically is that it encroaches. People say, well, it's my, I, I closed on the property. It's my property. I can I can occupy it here. When we don't have a police officer that's out there watching to see what you're doing every day, so um, we do need to keep this a condition of the special use to make sure that those life safety issues are are taken care of. Okay. 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 Good. Thank you. Oh, there are there's still five. Those were this. Oh wait. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's why I can't. Five, five of six, it's four of six. Oh, so it's five of six. Oh, there are no there. Are. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what right. I thought, but I can't hear you. I can't find them. There's one, two, three. I know I read them. Right. That's one, two, three. Everything's mad. There you go. That's one, two, three, four. All right. Yep. Okay. Has everyone read and agree with the findings of facts? Yes. 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 Mr. Secretary. Uh, you need a motion. You need a oh, motion, right? Motion. Did we get a motion? Or do we need it? How about a motion? Well, let's do a motion. Oh, yeah. I'll make a motion. <laughs> Is there a second? Second, subject to the conditions. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And we agree with the findings of facts? Yes. yes. Any other discussion? I'm sorry. No. I don't know. Got it out of order there. But. Mr. Secretary. Scott Heideman. Jay Holmes. Yes. Dan Fluger. Yes. Jim Hankins. Yes. Shane Klinger. Jody Stomberg. <coughs> Dan, John Danny Leavitt. Yes. Four yes, three absent. We'll send this forward with a positive recommendation to next Tuesday's 5.30 meeting, uh, July 5th. Okay, thank you. Okay. Welcome thank to you. McChesney. Thank you. thank you. Item 11 has been tabled at the request of the applicant. Is there other business? Public comment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Aye.